started, we're going to go over the multiple choice questions for our last unit test. Yes, I know we're all excited. No, nope, guess not excited. Okay, just me. All right, let's do number one. Number one was asking us to find a 95% confidence interval for the slope of the population regression line. So does anybody remember the very generic way to run or write out a confidence interval? Statistic. Plus or minus? Critical value. Critical value. Times? Excellent. And we're going to write standard deviation, but you probably know at this point in your stats career that 99% of the time it's going to be standard error, standard error, S-E, standard error. Okay. So in this case, you'll notice I boxed the word slope, right? Our sample statistic is the slope, which is a lowercase b. All right, lowercase b we've been using for slope, plus or minus. Do you remember what model we're using for uh, inference for linear regression? The, that's coming later. That's, that's chapter 26. This is chapter 27, actually. So with slope, this is going to be the T model, the T model. So we're going to use T star with degrees of freedom times. And like we said, we're really going to use standard error here of our sample statistic, the slope. Now we're actually given two out of three of these numbers, all right? If you remember from our conversations earlier this week, right? If I go to the word that's not intercept or constant, which in this case is the diameter of the tree, right? This right here is the slope. So the slope is 1.054. Plus or minus. I'm gonna need to do a little work to find T star, so I'll hold off on that. But do you see the number that's next to 1.054? This is the standard error. So just write that down, 0.322. All right, so hopefully after the last unit test, you feel comfortable doing this. You draw your T model. What level of confidence? 95. So what's in each tail? Very good, 2.5%. All right, so we've got to turn our calculator on. All right, talk like a pirate. Second bars. And we're doing inverse T, inverse T, second bars, inverse T, which is number four. The area is 0 0.025. Now you may have, may not remember the degrees of freedom for linear regression inference. So whether you're doing an interval about the slope, whether you're running a test about the slope, it's always the sample size minus two because we have two quantitative variables. The variables in this problem are the diameter of the tree is explaining the height of the tree, okay? So in this case, degrees of freedom is 31 minus two because we have 31 trees. So 29, hit enter, 2.045. So we do need to multiply those to get the margin of error. So my margin of error is 0.659. And then add and subtract to get your interval. When you're doing the AP exam, guys, if it's off by, you know, one one thousandth, that's not a big deal, right? Choose that answer. Okay, any questions on the first one? 
Yes, Thomas. You can do this by just like using the TA tool on the calculator. I think you can. Let's see. This is, I tried it. I didn't have like the X block, so. Let's see. Okay. Linear regression T interval G. Mm, no, because there's not a way to type in the stats. Yeah, I did it with the. The, the T interval? Yeah. I, Let's try that. Like, did that work? It's better, but it still did X block. So, no, it didn't work. So you did like a, this number eight? Yeah. Stats. Well, X bar I would use to use. Mm, no. I don't want to use that because even though I could probably use 1.054 there, I'm worried about, let's just do it. Let's see what happens, right? Uh, I'm worried about using uh, the standard error here because really that should be the standard deviation from the sample, which standard error is not the same in this case. So let's see, I'll put it and see what happens. Was it 31? Yeah. yeah. Maybe we'll get close enough, you know? Mm. No. Is that an answer choice? Not an answer choice, yeah. so yeah. I think honestly, if you really cared about it, which I, I just wouldn't take the time, you could actually, so standard error, of this is the standard deviation over the square root of the sample size, right? And this is way too much work, guys. But do we know this? Yeah. Yes. Do you know the sample size? 31. Yeah, 31. So could you find the standard deviation to put into that that we just did? Yeah. You could. So you could get it. I mean, if you're doing that, you're probably getting five anyway, okay? So I would recommend this just to kind of practice the the process again. That's a good question. Number two. All right. The moment you read this, what is this table called? Two-way two table. And I don't really know. We, we don't actually need to know this for this problem. But the moment you see a two-way table, what chi-squared test are you throwing out that you won't use? Goodness of fit. That's your key thing when you see two-way table. It'll either be homogeneity or independence. Again, not important here, right, to answer this question, but it will be later on. So make sure you know if it's a two-way table, it's not going to be goodness of fit. Okay? So in this case, it wants us to find the contribution to the chi-squared test statistic. So key phrase there is, do I need to find the overall chi-squared value? No, it'd probably actually be easier to do that. I just use the matrix and, and your calculator. So I just need to find the single contribution from one of these cells, right? Each of these, right? Each of these 10 cells will give us a contribution to the overall chi-squared test statistic. But the one that we care about, it says for the men who selected business networking as the most important factor. So that is right here. All right, so that's the actual data values, all right? So that's observed. So in my formula, all right, remember who wants to sing it for us? Oh, yeah. yeah, Maria, do you want to sing it for us? Oh, yeah. Nice, that was really good. Oh my gosh. So observe, I'll put the minus expected. Jonathan's going to get the next one, okay? Squared over <laughs> expected. Again, you don't need to sing it if you don't want to because you will get this formula on the test. All right, so I know 45 is going to go up here. I just don't know my expected value yet. All right, and I'm going to show you two ways. When I was watching you guys do this yesterday, most of you were just using the matrices, right, and using your calculator to get it for you. I'm going to show you real quick how to use, I know it seems clunky, the row total times the column total divided by the grand total. Again, you don't have to use this, but actually on this one, I think it's pretty quick, pretty fast to do. All right. So the row total for this cell right here, right, this specific one, the row total would be all the men. So in the question, it actually tells us how many men were in this. 1,000. That's why I think this one's a little easier to do it this way because it's giving us these, some of these numbers in the problem. Column total, I think we can add up how many uh, male or female. 
said business networking was their most important factor. 60. And then I believe the problem says there's 1,000 men and 1,000 women. All right, so what is that together? 2,000. All right, so if you start crossing out zeros, you essentially just end up doing, I cross out these three zeros from my thousands. So one times 60 divided by two. So one times 60 is 60. 60 divided by two is 30. So the expected value is 30. All right, what is 15 squared? 225 and 225 over 30 is seven and a half. All right, so that's the way without really using the calculator. I, again, you probably would use the calculator for 15 squared, totally fine. Okay, let's use the calculator for the matrices so we can show um, anyone who's watching this at home they can get the matrices. So second matrix, go over to edit. And what are the dimensions for this matrix? How many rows by how many columns? Two rows and five columns. Make sure uh, for some reason students yesterday were not including the other column. You do need to include that piece of data there. All right, so we have 600, 210, 105. These questions um, make you guys laugh and chuckle about social media. No? Okay, just make it. Nice, Australia. Well done. This question is probably at least four years old. All right. So once you have entered that matrix, <laughs> Hit stat, go over to tests. And remember, there are two options for chi squared. Which option did we throw out immediately when I read this two way table? So throw out the goodness of fit and just go to chi squared test. You don't need to know this to get this right, but remember if you read it, it's saying up here. Actually, I don't know doesn't probably give me enough to decide if I'm going to do homogeneity or independence. I was looking for a statement about like the relationship between them, right? That would tell me independence. All right. So hit letter C. I put my observed in matrix A. I'm telling the computer to put the expected values in matrix B. Calculate it. All right. Again, do I care about that P value? No, but what do you notice about the P value? Be careful with that P value with that E right there. Do you see that? Because really this is what? Point zero, 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 one, seven, four. That's super small. Okay, remember P values have to be between zero and one. So that's scientific notation on this calculator. So point and then four zeros, one, seven, four. Tiny P value, okay? All right, so now go to second matrix. Don't do the edit part, now just stay on the names. Hit matrix B. And we're in the first row, that fourth column, first row, fourth column, shouldn't be surprised, there's 30. Do you need to do both of those ways? Yeah. Please don't, save yourself time. All right, that's it for number two. Any questions on number two? Number three. Okay, so they're looking at the relationship between age and preference for two mayoral candidates. All right, how would you describe those variables? You could maybe convince me, Victor, that age could be quantitative, but then if you kept reading, it says they classified your age into one of three age groups. So when they say that, now you changed age to be categorical, all right? And mayoral candidate, I'm not sure how you make that quantitative. So we're gonna just have person one, person two. So what I first did actually for this problem was I made a quick little made up table. So I did like age group one, age group two, age group three. And this was like mayoral candidate one, 
mayoral candidate too. Does it matter if you decided to put the mayoral candidates as your rows and the age groups as your columns? It does not. So if you're thinking, oh, how do I know to make it that way? It doesn't matter as long as you can visualize what the table is. Okay. So now getting back to what you said a few questions earlier, Jonathan, right? If these are both categorical, when they give you the test statistic for running the appropriate chi-squared test, this number is the same as our chi-squared test statistic. All right, so that's good, important to know that when we're talking about two categorical variables, we're talking about chi-squared. All right, do you remember what that looks like when you sketch it? Skew to the right. All right, and just put that somewhere. And we're always shading to the right. Now, before I go to the calculator to find that area under the curve, I do need the, the degrees of freedom, which is different than what we had before. Degrees of freedom for two-way tables is rows minus one times columns minus one. So that's kind of the main reason that I made that table at the beginning. So in my table, which could be different than yours, right? But it won't matter, right? If you're my rows is your columns, your columns is my rows. It doesn't matter because you're just subtracting one, then multiplying. How many rows do I have? Three rows. How many columns do I have? Two rows. So the degrees of freedom is going to be two. So make sure your brain knows how to find degrees of freedom for all these things. Okay, we found degrees of freedom in number one for the linear regression with T, right? How do we find degrees of freedom for that? Remember what we did in number one? It was sample size minus two. We just talked about how to find degrees of freedom for two-way tables. Do you remember how to find degrees of freedom for chi-squared goodness of fit tests? Because they're not two-way tables. I'll say it again. I said a lot of words. How do you find the degrees of freedom for chi-squared goodness of fit tests? Number of? It's really close. I would, that's probably going to get you right there. I would say number of categories minus one. But yes, the idea is the number of groups or categories minus one. Right? Remember, the color, just think of your M&Ms. Right? It's the number of colors minus one. Okay? All right. So go to your calculator. Second, bars. We're going down to chi-squared, and I always choose CVF when I'm doing shading, all right? So I shade it to the right. So number eight is chi-squared CDF. So the lower bound, you go ahead, Thomas. You always choose CDF when? When you're shading. Okay. And honestly, in this class, I don't think I've ever cho chosen PDF, right? I have chosen PDF in this class when we did probability, binomial PDF, binomial CDF. Right, but in terms of the models, like these models, I haven't chosen that. Gosh, I can't wait to review. It's gonna be awesome. All right, degrees of freedom is two. And I can't wait to release it so I get to take it on my own. Oh man, it's gonna be great. So excited. I like it's fun. Yeah. I do. So point one five four. So this is the p-value. Now I'm going to try to help you understand the uh, question here of why I did that. The question says, approximately, what is the probability that the observed responses would be as far or farther from the expected responses if there is no association, association between age group and preference? So if we go back to the very first time I tried to explain p-value to you, in January, I tried to explain p-value like this. If you assume the null hypothesis is your best idea, then the likelihood of observing your specific sample or something more extreme is the p-value. Okay? So what they're saying here is, if you assume that the age of these people voting and their mayoral candidate preference has no association 
then the likelihood of getting our data or something farther from that or more extreme is the p-value. So this is just a, another way of asking, can you find the p-value? Okay. I don't think all this is what makes this, this problem challenging. I think you guys can all do this. I think it's reading this and recognizing, oh yeah, that's what I need to do. Okay. All right. Let's go to four. Number four, we're trying to find a 98% confidence interval for the slope of the least squares regression line. Guys, this feels like exactly like which one? one. The first one. All right, you're going to see as you go through this review, there's only so many iterations I could find of these types of questions on the AP exam. So that's a good thing, right? If you get this, hopefully you'll be ready to get it right. So we have our slope, right? Our sample statistic is our slope, plus or minus T star times the standard error of our sample statistic. Okay, so based on, bless you, that computer output, what is the slope? Excellent. So just knowing that means A and B are wrong, right? They've used the incorrect coefficient. They've actually chosen what? What is negative 15.668? The constant. I'm going to say y-intercept, but yes, it is the constant. It's the y-intercept from your linear regression model. Plus or minus? Do I know T star yet? No, and I look at all your answer choices, right? They've got different ones. All right, so I do need to find that here in a moment. Times, what's our standard error? Is that helping me eliminate anything? No, everything else has already been eliminated. So let's go ahead and make the curve. It's 98% confidence. So we have 1% in each tail. Before we go, make sure you know your degrees of freedom. What's our degrees of freedom when we're doing inference for linear regression? Nice, uh, Catherine. Sample size minus two, which is gonna be 22 observations minus two, which is 20. So it's minus two observations? It's actually minus two because there are two quantitative variables. In this case, they are blood sugar, and brain shrinkage. And I do not know the units, but some of you that go into understanding brains, or maybe you do know, because some of you are in anatomy, what the measurement we use for brain size is. I don't know. Inches? Centimeters? Centimeters. I don't, I don't know. Okay. I've never, I've never claimed to be right. All right, so second bar, inverse T, 0 0.01 this time, 20 for degrees of freedom. Let's paste it. 2.528, 2.528, so C. What's wrong? I just said this is not chi-squared. Yes, this is not chi-squared, right? The moment I read that they want me to run an interval for slope, 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 is never chi-squared. Slope is always a linear regression. The confidence interval is not like chi-squared. No, I don't think they'll ever make you. We don't have to run any confidence intervals for chi-squared, but I don't want to say never, say never, because maybe they'll throw that at you on the investigative task. Oh, God, great song. Huh? Oh, that's coming in the review time. So there are six free response questions on the AP exam, and the sixth one is called the investigative task. It is always the longest one, the hardest one, and it's something you don't technically know. The way they say you can answer it is if you know what you're doing in this class, you should be able to take it and apply it in a new situation. We'll look at a couple together. All right. So it's hard to really prepare for it, is what I'm trying to say. So don't stress. That's something I didn't have to do because I'm so old. All right, number five, a town manager is interested in comparing requests for various town provided services with 
nationally published proportions. That sure sounds like we're taking something that we care about and comparing it to a stated claim. That sounds like we want to see if our stuff fits with the national idea of what's going on. So in this case, I'm going to go with good instead of fit. All right. Remember, association here is really just a chi-squared test for independence. All right. I really hope you chuckled at letter E. Did anyone chuckle? Just me? Chuckle letter E. They're trying to morph things together there. You would never use the T model for proportions. Also, proportions are from categorical variables. And if you use the word correlation in this class, it better be about quantitative variables. So this is just makes me sad. All right. Usually they don't do that. Like the AP exam usually doesn't do that because that's just like hashtag goofy, right, Ronald? Yeah. All right. Let's go to six. All right. Let's see if you remember the, ge the general or generic way to find a test statistic. So if you're thinking back to the first one you ever found, that was the Z score. Z score. Now it's been a long time since you found Z scores. All right. That's in the bottom is sigma. Do you remember what sigma is? Standard deviation. That's in the bottom. Do you remember what's in the top when you find it? So there's two means, right? There's a sample mean and a population mean. Do you know which one goes first? Sample goes first. And do you remember the alliteration minus the population? Do you know what P word I'm talking about? It's not proportion. Somebody said it. What up, bro? You're like watching baseball, but you got it, man. What are you watching? Is it baseball? Was I right? Oh my gosh. Is the opening day even started yet? Okay. Just getting ready. Totally understand. Totally get it. Yesterday I had a, the first time I had to tell a four-year-old to stop eating grass on the baseball field. Yep, that's where we were yesterday at practice. Carter, please stop eating grass. Didn't think I'd ever have to do that. Okay. So let's get specific here. That's super general, right? Super general. So let's get specific. So this is going to be a T value equals... Do you remember when we do T tests for linear regression, we care about one word. It starts with an S. No. It's a, a word you use all the time in algebra. It's like if you were to walk by an algebra one class, like, oh, they're working on the slope. Oh, okay. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Thomas. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. You meant to say slope. Yeah, I slope. My bad. <laughs> slope. Minus. Do you guys remember seeing that uh, on Monday, that capital letter B for beta? That is the, if we were able to have all the data, which we won't, right? If we have the entire, all the population values and we made a regression line, that big B would be the slope of that line, which we will never know, okay? We will assume, unless they tell us otherwise, we will assume, right, the null hypothesis is that these two variables have no linear relationship. So that means their line is a horizontal line. Think back to algebra one. What is the slope of horizontal lines? Zero. So what are they telling us here? That this is going to be zero. I don't want to say it's always zero, right? Because what if they had said that it equals six? What would I be putting here? Six. So just be careful. Usually it will be zero, but they may not be zero, right? And I know we've said this already in this video. But standard deviation usually ends up becoming standard error. All right, so we know all these things. What is the slope from our computer output? Negative 2.2. Nice, Ariel. We said that the big B beta, they told us, is zero. And then go into your computer output. What is the standard error? 0 0.07. So the answer is D. Do you guys see letter E? 
Can we chat about letter E for a second? Yeah, Thomas? Is it because, like, so, you know, just trying to trick them into thinking that you, you, you need to, like, do, do it? Yes. Yeah. So I always tell students, like, we already said this formula before with your uh, excellent question on number one, Thomas, or I think it was number one. The, this is the formula, right, for the standard error. So if you do this, you're, like, doing it again. But they've already done it. So in this 0.07, they've already done that square root of 11. Is what I'm trying to say. So you don't need to do it again. This will never be SD. But if it was, it won't be. All right. So this is one of those like um, I'm not going to say it because I tell my children we don't say this word. But like when I was in college, uh, a lot of one of my professors was really a big fan of the the Kiss acronym. Do you know that acronym? Keep it simple. We don't say that word, Estrella, in this house, this classroom. This is very much one of those kiss moments where it says standard error. Just put that in the denominator. Okay? All right. What's wrong? Now you have. Keep it simple. Student, yes. Gosh, see, Leslie, next year, it'll be so much better. That was for Leslie. Number seven. What table is this? Two-way two 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 table, right? Two-way table. So immediately I'm thinking, throw out goodness of fit. So I'm throwing out goodness of fit. Okay? And it says in the problem... They're investigating whether there is a relationship between vehicle type and color. And how would you describe those two variables? They're categorical. So we're always doing chi-squared for categorical variables. We don't even see homogeneity here, so we know it must be independence. Yes, Thomas? I know it's probably very quickly explain why A, B, and C are wrong. Yes. Two sample, so T tests, T tests have to be averages, have to be means. All right, these are not averages. We're not saying the average number of cars, right? It's just counting cars, right? Here, put the red ones here, the black ones there, car, truck. So there's no averages. So no, no T tests. Two sample Z tests would be proportions. You can make that work if you said, all right, the total number of black vehicles is, I don't know what that is, but it would be 78 over 275. So you could say, is that proportion, do I think that from my sample, does that equal the proportion that I currently think of the black vehicles is 65%? Do I have enough evidence to say that the proportion has changed? Then you could use a Z test. But you have to get two groups here. We only have one sample, so no, you can't really do it. And then the, the simple way to say it is you're doing a test on chi-squared and linear regression. So you're good. Not going to do this. But next Wednesday, though. Wait, you said the Wednesday, the thing on Wednesday is going to be like a very... Oh, yeah. Summative. Okay. Let's do number eight. Yeah. Number eight. Number eight has a lot, guys. It not only has a scatter plot, it also has the computer output again. It's got a lot going on. So if I zoom in on the question, it says a 95% confidence interval for the slope. Is this the third time we've done this? I think it's number three. Like I said, there's just so many, only so many things I can do with this. So plus or minus T star degrees of freedom times the standard error of our sample statistic, which is the slope. All right, so what is the slope of that regression line? Was that able to let us cross anything out? No, sad. All right, what's the standard error? Does that help us? Yes. yes. Again, what are they doing incorrectly on these three? They, they think they need to get the standard error, but guys, we already have the standard error. All right, so that's why those are incorrect. So let's do our curve. We're back to 95%. Degrees of freedom, 
Everybody got it? There's 23 students. So 23 minus two, which is 21. So ready? Second vars inverse T, which is number four, point zero two five. I already forgot, was it 21? Yes. Yeah. 2.080. We did it. It's B. Are we doing the multiple choice? Yeah, if I can't do both tomorrow, I'll make sure that the when we don't do the recording is yeah, posted. So no worries. You can watch this weekend. Two more. We're so close, guys. All right, number nine. I put this one here, hoping that you guys would all get this right. There's a lot going on up here, but the thing I focus in on, it says, which of the plot provides the strongest evidence that the regression line is an appropriate model? The moment you read, right, if these are residuals plots, and we want to say that our linear model is appropriate to use, this is really a question. I know I put it in here because it's, talking about the assumptions and conditions for uh, regression. But really, this is a question of chapter eight. And what does our residuals plot need to show if it's appropriate to use the linear model? No pattern, a cloud. So nothing, nothing exciting. And this is the only one that has nothing exciting. Right? I think we would describe this one as very much curved. Right? This looks like an absolute value upside down, right? reflected. Do you guys remember what D and E are? Fan shape, fan shape, where it gets like kind of narrows or widens. All right, so be aware of the fan shape. That's a problem, right? That's a pattern. Last one, and you guessed it, guys. It's another confidence interval, but this time I'm only asking for the margin of error. So I write V plus or minus T star times the standard error. And hopefully at this point, please, 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 I hope it almost April, you know what the margin of error is in a confidence interval. Yeah, Tom. What would you say if you found out by looking through this kind of yesterday? Like you were one day old? Did you learn found that out? Yeah. That makes me sad. I mean, it makes me feel like I did a bad job. That's what it makes me feel. The simplest way to do it, the KISS way to do this, is just to say whatever's after the plus or minus. That's always the margin of error. That's the simplest way. The more challenging way is it's your critical value times the standard deviation. All right, that's the margin of error. All right, because again, right, what do we think the slope is going to be? B. I do it once, guys, right? It's in the name. So we think it's going to be B. We think it's going to be 2.697. But we've got to go up and down a little bit, that's the margin of error. All right, so do I care about the 2.697? I do not in this case. Look at all my answer choices for T star. They're all the same, so I know what T star is. That's nice. All right, and then go to your output. What's the standard error? 0.745. So it's A. Uh-oh. Don't do it. 